toot toot. Toot toot. All aboard. Meow. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my thoughts on a type of video format where I just basically don't have as much formatting and don't put as much work, but still you get to hear my opinion and my voice talking about video games. I mean, is there anything else that somebody would really want from me? I hope not, because that's what I do a lot of. So, today we are going to have a look at Sid Meier's Railroads! Exclamation point. So the last Sid Meier's game that I've covered was Pirates, and boy, oh boy, it was fantastic. I actually didn't know. If you didn't know, Sid Meier's adds his name to games. It's actually a branding thing that the people that work with him do. I, I, I'm sorry, Sid Meier's. I came off of the impression that you were some egotistical snob who was like, I'm going to put my name on everything. But the whole idea is that his games are supposed to have a certain standard of quality, and you pu he puts his name on the games, and it was his, co his team that was like, hey, we got to put Sid Meier's name on this because he makes really good games. And he was like, no, nah, no, nah, don't do that, don't do that. And everyone was like, no, we got to do that. So that's why you say Sid Meier, that's why you see Sid Meier's on games. It's kind of a branding thing that they do. They're like, Sid Meier's quality. And you can definitely see a lot of the similarities, not so much in theme or in style of game, it's interesting watching, playing through different Sid Meier's games because they all have a lot of similar similarities, but you just like, I don't know. I can see the prerequisite for prerequisite why they would move on to like the Civilization games after starting with like the Ace Patrol games and the Railroad games. I don't know about Sid Meier's Pirates. That one doesn't make much sense. But you can see a lot of similarities, especially in this one. I'm just like, oh, look, here's a city, and you move from there. That's pretty similar to Civilization as well, as far as that's concerned, but you're not building anything like that. So you kind of see, like, little bits and pieces here, and going back and playing older games is interesting for that. But I'm already off on another tangent. So, Sid Meier's Railroads. It is developed by Firaxis Games, and it was released October 2006. It is a strategy management game where the whole concept is trains, and there's lots of economy-related things. Let's just jump right into it. Where to start? So, first off, I've chosen a game mode that is just basically place tracks on the ground without any worry about economy or anything like that. So we can be like, yeah, we'll do this. Yeah, that looks fun. There's not much point to that. This mode is really easy to help you get into just learning how to play. Hey, hey, stop. So, some things I noticed. I have had a lot of crashing with this game. And I'm also under the impression that I'm not the only one, seeing as at the time that I'm making this video, the current disposition on the Steam reviews ladder is that the game's mixed. If it didn't crash, it would be a really solid title. And I'm pretty sure that's why most people have been re have not been recommending the game because of its crashing problems. So keep that in mind if you're going to get this game. Keep in mind the just operating system that you're running. I imagine that operating systems 8 and above, since 10 and 8 are pretty much the same thing and have similar problems... I'd imagine that they would be the ones that would be most likely to crash. I don't know how stable this game is on 7. I'd love to test that, but I don't have nearly enough operating systems and time to download it on each one individually. I can say this much, it auto-saves enough that you can still find a way to play through it because it auto-saves every, like, f 5 minutes, less than 5 minutes. The auto-save is crazy, and that might actually be part of the reason why it crashes so much is that it auto-saves so much. Not something that I've played with. I could definitely play with that more if people really, really want to know more about that. and start. I can start looking up solutions, but, you know, it's fine. I'm not too worried about it. So here's the idea. You are a train rail, 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 railroad baron of sorts, and your job is to connect all these different cities together and move supplies from one to another to another. So let's start off with the basics. Alright? 
this is you always start in one city. You get to train a uh, terminal in a city, and then if you click on the city, you have the demands, the supply, the demands, and then the refinery process. So the refinery. Let's let's just start with um, let's start with the supply. There's so much that I want to talk about. It's a really fun game, and the more you get into it, the more it's just like, ah, oh, I see. You can play this against other people as well. I don't know how well the multiplayer works. I don't know if you can play how well it works against other people. I haven't done any online stuff, but I've played against bots. And on an easier difficulty, I've had fun. It's been great. I've been enjoying it a lot. So what we have here is the supply is six people and four male. So the easiest way to start off is to just meet the supply and demand for that. So you, people like to travel to this area and like to get their mails to this area. So let's just first start off with making, with connecting these two cities. So as you've already seen me clicking around, I am very familiar with that. Oh, there are keyboard shortcuts that can make it easier. So you can press T to lay track. So you lay track and we need to lay a track all the way over here and it doesn't matter where you put it as you can see the buildings will all rearrange for it so don't worry about that at all that's not very realistic you don't move a skyscraper for a railroad track but it does make gameplay easier so let's just let's just put that all the way through like that all right then I right click to get rid of that so now we have tracks connecting I'm just like let, let's just let's just set up some some stuff that just does that you'd be Let's make some mistakes on purpose. Let's put it that way. So, okay. They're now connected. Let's try to put a train between the two of them. Hmm. So we can only click here to add this and we're like, okay, we want that. We want that. Why can't why can't we go here? The reason you can't go to the city is because you need to build a depot. I want to read it depot. If I say depot, I'm sorry. I, I just can't read common English words, okay? So, okay, now we have a station. I'd rather call it a train station. So now we have a train station in New York. You will notice that you cannot add additional train stations. You also cannot add train stations outside of the city. So when you click on an area, this isn't a good way to show it. Let's Let's just dummy build something, okay? You see this green circle around here? This green circle indicates where you can build and set down the depot. So I couldn't have built the depot much farther out of the city than it currently is. So you can build it in the middle, you can build it inside. It doesn't matter. There's probably an optimal way of going about it. I'm not going to worry about what the optimal way of doing it is. So now we have a depot. Now we can run a train between these two areas. So, okay, let's take some people and let's take some mail and we can't take any of these because there's nothing here but we could run a line there if we wanted to now you will notice that there is now a black crosshair on this city so that means that they will receive these goods so if they aren't going to receive something they wouldn't show up like that well I'll be able to show that later on down the line so okay let's do three and two alright so alright this is now indicating this is where the train is departing from and now we click on it, and this is stop number two, and this is where the train is going. So as you can see, there's they're giving a visual representation of a train going backwards and forwards between these with this one track. So that's how this is going to work. So then you can set priority. I haven't done much with that one. I believe that priority means that if you're you set a high priority train, that one, if there's like an intersection, it will take precedence over the other trains. So let's just set low because why not? So, okay, so now we set it up. As you can see, the carts are now being added to it, and now they will run between there. We got mail, we got mail. We're gonna run all the way over here. And by the way, as far as map controls are concerned, you can use arrow keys like I'm using now, or you can scroll to the edges. It's a little bit harder because I'm currently in window mode rather than in full screen. Full screen, it would work better, but the scrolling is kind of slow regardless. Or the way that I use the most is actually this way. You can definitely increase the scroll speed, but I just click on the mini map, click and drag. If you want to rotate, you click on the middle mouse and then you click and drag right or left and that's how you rotate that as well. 
There's probably a keyboard approximation for rotating, but we're not going to worry about that for this game. Or I'm not going to. If you want to, you can look it up and see what keys are mapped to this or that. So, in a normal game, we would be getting money for moving these goods around. Which, we'll jump into a normal game here in a little bit. I want to cover some basic, basic stuff first. Basically, I want to give you the tutorial without doing the tutorial because let's not look at a tutorial when I'm here. Because then it's just you and I playing the tutorial and that's silly. Why would we do that? So as you see here, you got two different ways of laying tracks. Double track, which lets you put it directly next to it. Or you can lay down a single track, which then lays it down. Uh, then you can go whatever direction that you want to. With the double track, it caps once it's at the end there. So I can no longer go... I can't go any farther with the double track, but I can double track all the way to the end of this one as well. So that's kind of the way that the double track works. I don't think you can take a single track in... I've never tried this right. You can't take a single track in and line it up manually that way. If you wanted to do something like that, you would have to double track here and then you would have to single track there then you could connect it that way and there is a maximum amount of intersections that you can have so as you can see we're not getting any additional added points here but maybe it would work I've never actually tried this let's find out let's rem let's, you know what Let's just remove all these so you get to see how the inner workings are of this. And we can remove that. Let's remove that. Let's remove that. Is there a keyboard? Delete. We can use the delete key. Yes. Whenever something is meticulous and takes a long time, the best way to solve that problem is to just go through and delete. Well, it's already stretched out there. So let's run a lot of trains between these two because why not why not you know okay we got that one we got that one we got that one by the way this is definitely not the strategy you should approach but you can experiment with stuff like this in this game mode so let's just add a bunch of ones and see if they're actually going to make an impact one way or another Okay, so now we can run several trains through there. Wow, look at that. It's like a, it's a highway. Yeah, it's cool. Let's change our existing train. So by doing that, I'm going to right-click on it. And let's reduce it down to one car. So now it's just going to be one. So it's actually going to travel even faster. Oops, did I click accept? Okay, so I think it's going to make this one last trip. And then it will drop off all the other carts. And then we'll see if we can run one train through at a time okay one one mail mail all right let's just let's just do this to there okay and then let's do this to there so two three Let's just keep on. Let's just let's make a logistic nightmare. This is something that you would not want to do. So let's go with this to here now. Ah, so here's an example of a bit of a problem that we have here. So the train doesn't do anything. It leaves here empty and then it goes here to pick up that and then to bring it back. So that's what this one means. Some a mistake that I made early on in the game which I didn't understand that you need to have. So you can move the engine. So the engine is now moving between these two points. If you don't have any carts on it, your train is not going to make you any money in the game, which basically is pointless. There's no point in having the train doing this other than be like, woo, look, it goes. Because in the normal game, an engine is going to cost you money, so it needs to be able to make money back. So that's part of the maintenance kind of thing. So I'm just going to go back and delete. Let's go back here. Let's take one of those and move that train there. Okay. How do we get up there? Let's just keep on adding stuff until it breaks. Because eventually it'll get to a point where we can, where the trains are all stuck because they're all stalemated staring at each other. Okay. So, 
Here's a good example of where we're now having problems. Is that one train that can actually still move? It's one train that can still move. Depending on the rail difficulties that you have, your trains may or may not be able to move like this. So now we have, like, all the trains are stopped. What can we do? There's a number of things we can do, actually. We can go. Uh, it's not made well. I'm so sorry. Oh, man, I have, I just can't. I can't. I can't right now, guys. I can't. I gotta just, gotta just put this one here. Just don't mind me. It's okay. I'm just gonna just cross that one there. Ta-da! Oh no! How did that happen? I don't even know. So let's cross here. So now, now these outside trains. This train now can. Uh, that, was, that was that was that was supposed to work. There we go. So now it goes around, and now that works for this one. Now we do still have a stalemate here between these guys. So these ones here, these aren't actually doing anything unless you're bypassing the entire thing. I think. I think. Not 100% sure about that one. Whoa, that is a crash. What? That is broken. That is weird. What is going on? So somehow they they work. On a harder difficulty, I don't think it should work at all. This should be terrible. So what we can do, we can cross some spots over like that. Then let's cross this one over like that. And then we will cross. No, 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 no. Let's cross this one over like that. And cross that one over like that. And then we will cross that one over. And then we will cross that one over. And I don't know what the point of this is anymore. Now I'm just connecting stuff because why not? Can we do this? Uh, it's too sharp of a turn. You can't do that one. It's not a smart way of doing it. So let's go like that. We have infinite building. Why not? This is going to look stupid. So some of these train tracks are not going to be used because the trains automatically path for themselves. So it's kind of like a Sim City in that regards. Ooh, that doesn't look good at all, does it? Nope, nope. So now we can we could just add that one there, and we could add that one there, and we could add that one there. Of course, you have a bit of a problem now. You gotta wait until the trains like take the correct turns. So let's just we've we've made a nightmare right now. There's there's just no fixing this. You should not you should not do something like this. Can we restart? Is there a quick restart? Options retire. There's no retiring from this one. Ah, fine, we'll just work with it. Let's let's go on to another city. We're just gonna move. We're just gonna move our rail. We'll just we're just gonna work here in New York. Okay. That's what that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna focus on now. We're not gonna worry about the the nightmare shenanigans we got going on over here. So York, not New York. It's old York, the one that isn't new. So York, York supplies people and mail. It can refine wheat or grain into food, which then food can be sent to somebody else, like the starving people in Trenton. So let's find wheat. If you look at the mini map, that shows where the wheat is right now. So wheat should be located right here. So here's a farm who supplies wheat. So normally you'd have to be careful on how much money it's going to cost to lay a track to get there. But in this mode, we can just set it. Remember, you can't get anything until you set, set down a depot to get that. All right. So it's got eight wheat. Let's run two trains. Let's run two trains all the way back to York. But again, we don't have a depot here yet, so let's put the depot there. And then let's upgrade the depot. Okay. And now let's run a train from here. Let's take four. 
to here. And then to make sure that we definitely get the most out of this, four to here, because then we have two of them moving four. So it shows the supply of it, and I don't know how high the supply goes, but the supply drops. So that's part of the supply and demand. If you have competitors that are really aggressive in taking resources and moving them before you, they're getting more money than you for making the move. So that's something also to keep in mind. So as wheat then comes to York, then York will be able to supply resources to another city. So let's find somebody else who wants food. Harrisburg wants food, but this place is a nightmare. Let's not do anything with that. Oh yay, newspaper feed. We have new speed record. So let's, does Trenton need food? Trenton needs food. Let's bring food to Trenton. Sounds like a sounds like a plan. If somebody lives in Trenton, they're like, "Wow, you're talking about my city." No one ever talks about my city here. I thought I was setting it up to go next to it. Why aren't you doing that? Okay, double. Okay, double. All right. So now that while, we've, while we haven't been paying attention anymore, you will now see that slowly as the wheat has been taken in, it is supplying food or forks, I guess, if you want to take it in a literal sense. There are now two forks that have been supplied here. And now we have exhausted this one. And so now we have two trains running to take one each because they can't make enough. And so now the trains, just the time is being wasted. This is a waste of time for pretty much everybody. So this is an example of something you would not want to do in the normal game. You'd want one train running between the city, and it's just it's grossly ineffective. It's not a good idea at all. So let's just get rid of one of these trains. We only need one train running back and forward between these two. So let's get rid of this train. Let's see what happens if we just delete these routes. What happens to the train? No, you can't do that. So you have to legitimately go in here, scrap the train, and you get some of those resources back. You can also scrap the rails. Scrapping rails also gets you back some resources. So that's something to keep in mind. So now we only have one train running between the two of those, which honestly, that's all we needed. Now let's run a train from York. Ah, we didn't put a terminal down in the other spots. So we can't do anything yet. We gotta put a terminal in Trenton. All right, we're gonna run a train from York, carrying that, some of those, some of those, all the way to Trenton, to the starving people of Trenton. So it's bringing food, mail, and two other people. So you can mix com a, com a, a set of goods. I think you can also transport them, but I'm not going to do that. Has been in mobile for quite some time. Try rerouting some of the seven trains going through Harrisburg. Yeah, Harrisburg is kind of a nightmare, isn't it? Can we can we select multiple things? Holding down shift's not letting me. Clicking and dragging isn't letting me. Well, let's just get rid of you. Get rid of you, get rid of you, get rid of you, get rid of you, get rid of you. Can't delete this piece of track. Okay. Oh, right, because that's the original track that came with it. So if we really wanted to clean that up, we could. I don't want to. Too much work. So this is kind of a sample to get you the idea of how it works. There's a lot more to the user interface that we can delve into and could be explained to you, but with simulation and strategy games, that's probably not a good idea because I've already spent several hours playing the game and I got a pretty good grasp on how the game works. For somebody who's new, that's probably gonna end up being a little bit too much because this is definitely a game that I feel I can really get behind. I'm not gonna be one of the best at it, but I'm probably better than average when it comes to strategy games because these are games I really like. I enjoy strategy simulation and other genres. Apparently, apparently not art articulation in that case, but you know, you know what I mean. So let's get rid of that. Let's get oh, can't get rid of that one. That would be a bad idea. Destroy the track while the train's still on it. Mm-hmm. So you kind of get the idea of how this works. That's kind of the basic of it. 
let's jump into a game that I have progressed. Let's just let's 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 bedazzle some people with just how much detail can go into a game. All right. So let's have a look at my first game. This game's pretty much over, if not over. So let's look at the map. You got this area here. You've got all oh, this crazy train station here. You got a train. Ooh, that's a quest there. That's why that one's yellow. There's a quest that I should be doing something that I'm not. And then you got all this other area over here in these blue spots. So, okay. When you're playing a normal game, there are some objectives. And this is where you want to get a little bit familiar with the user interface as a whole. So we've explained the basics that you're going to spend most of your time doing. That's why there are keyboard shortcuts to buy a train, build the depot, lay track, double track. Like Those are going to be the things that you're going to use for the most part while you're playing the game. Everything else gets a whole lot more complicated, but we'll take it one at a time. So these are all bound to your F keys. If you want to do it really fast, you can switch between your F keys. We're just going to click for the sake of simplicity. Financial reports. This makes my eyes glaze over. I think accountants would probably enjoy this, but not me. This will help you probably later on in the game, or if you get into a more hardcore scenario of the game. Uh, it's not, not going to be for me, though. I'm just It, it hurts. It really hurts. This is the stocks. Uh, we're not going to talk about this really because because oops we're selling we don't want to sell we want to buy stocks you can it, early on in the game if you need more money you can sell stocks of your company to get more money uh, or you can buy them to protect them if somebody buys all your stocks then your company goes out of business again b bigger strategies with with again with and against other ai we'll talk about that another time so these are victory conditions this is how you win this is your goal so on this map the goal was for the first not five years. Whenever this started, it started counting down, and then as years went by, um, I, my goal was to get build a shipping lane from Flagstaff to Phoenix and Las Vegas. So I succeeded in that. I connected all the cities. So the city was... So you got victory conditions. So here we need to build Flag, Flagstaff, Phoenix, and Las Vegas. So okay... Phoenix is here, Flagstaff is here, and Las Vegas is here. And to get that objective, I just needed to run. It says a shipping lane, um, basically a fancy way of saying train tracks. You just had to connect all of those. And then Gold Rush, ship five cartloads of gold to get yourself started with some proper spending money. So this was the first mission that I did. We'll bid on that. I don't care. So what we needed to do is I brought this up and okay. So we want gold. Okay. So these are the cities that can make gold. Las Vegas can make gold. Los Angeles can make gold. And Yuma. Yuma? Yuma can make gold. So I clicked on here okay so it takes this rocky bumpy looking thing which is ore I think yeah ore so it takes ore and then it turns it into gold so I had I had to be like okay so if it makes gold where does the ore come from ah here's ore so as you can see on the mini map again we'll just we'll just click out of that we'll just now go to ore so ore itself is actually really inexpensive you're not gonna make much out of it but by converting it to gold and then moving that gold to another city, that's where you're going to make a lot of the money. A lot of them US dollars. So you've got several places you can get ore. You can get ore here, which again, this is not tapped in the six spots. I should, probably should have tapped into that one. I wasn't doing a good job of that. Again, this was my first game. I made a lot of mistakes. I was not very effective at getting stuff. Then here's gold yet again. I mean, ore yet again. So I could take this ore and move it here I could take I should take this ore then move it here and then take this ore and move it here like everything here is set up so well that I could just move stuff and then after making the gold bars then what I should have done is then taken the gold and then moved the gold here gold here gold here this gold and bring all the gold all the way back here and that would have gotten me the most amount of money because this is currently the highest the most profitable good to move. 
However, you can start out and you can move with passengers and stuff like that. And so I've got a bunch of passenger trains that are still moving around and moving mail. So this is how you make money early on. And then you you want to work your way up to being able to move higher commodities and move those around. Okay, so that's how you got gold, though. So we're almost... Yeah, okay. We finished the first victory condition. So now we got 30 years to finish this victory condition as well, which we've already very much finished. Build safe passage through the desert by connecting L.A. and Las Vegas. There's L.A. Las Vegas. I guess did I, I connected that way. I don't know. that. All of those got done at like the same time. Expand your company to unheard heights by obtaining a net worth of 5 million success. So your net worth is up here in the top right. The more you build... And the more you invest, the higher your network net worth is. So let's say, let's see what happens if we upgrade all of our train engines. Because if you, okay, so if you bring up here, you have the goods and then you have the trains. So I click on this train. Okay, this train is 50 years old. That is an old train. Let's upgrade it. Replace this train's engine with a different engine. So we will now go here, replace, select, bam. All right, now let's go here. Let's just replace these. So we got a bunch of old train engines that we are now going to upgrade into newer train engines, which will now be faster and get the work done. And they will also cost us less because they're not, they don't need as much repair because they're going to be new. That's the way the game sells it to us, though. New things have their own repair cost that they have to do, but that's the way the game's going to work. So just, yeah, just, shh, it's okay. Shh, fine, just go with it. Just go with it. As you can see, boom, our network worth has already gone up significantly. I think it's gone up significantly. I wasn't paying attention, to be honest, so I could be wrong. There are other ways to increase your net worth. Having more shipping lines is one way. Let's put some of this. Let's go over here and connect that to this. Throw one of them in there. New speed record. Yay! All right, now we want to send a train from here. We don't want to overload it because then it's going to take a long time to get there. Send it there, connect it. We're on our way through. So now that'll increase our network worth again. So it'll, it'll increase. So I'm just going to make a mental note. That's an eight. Now let's buy all the things. So, okay, now we're going to buy that. We're going to buy that. Let's upgrade the stations on the different things. The keyboard shortcut to switch between stations is uh, your comma key. So let's just let's build some stuff here. You can build things here. We'll talk about what I'm doing another time. Let's get another one of those. Let's get one of those. Whoops. Nope. 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 Can we upgrade that? Yes, we can. We're going to upgrade that terminal. So now we have a better terminal. We're going to grab that one. So now that one can make gold as well. No. Can it make gold? I don't know. It's not building anything. I'm out of money? I'm out of money. So this is the active amount of money that you have. So you are limited on what you can buy and how fast you can buy it in that regard. So we got to make more monies. So we're back to that problem. How many is being moved here? Not nearly enough. That's how much should probably be being moved between these two. That would be a whole lot more effective. Okay. Let's do what I was suggesting earlier where we should be taking some of these and eek 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 this is terrible oh, this is terrible so bad oh no we're just gonna get rid of that gonna do that and then we're just going to connect oh terminal think I'd be better at that wouldn't you all right, we're going to connect that. We did upgrade all of our trains, though. So, okay, let's do that, and let's bring them all in here. So it should be on the lane connecting here, of course, so it brings it in there. Now we're going to have that. Now we're going to want to make sure that we have a line that we can connect this to the city that's going to want all the gold. So let's quickly have a look. Okay, is there an alternative? Yes. Let's bring it into this city because it's farther away. I think you get better rates the farther that you take the goods. So that's something to keep in mind. And this is a pretty straight shot here. But 
Let's go the long way around. And oh, Atratsu rewarded. Atratsu has done a great thing. Dun 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 dun. He's brought riches. Dun 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 dun. dun. During the gold rush. Dun 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 dun. All right. So now we've been moving. Now we're gonna start moving gold between these two. So we're not gonna take that much. This one might not work the way I wanted to. Let's take three. Move them here. We might want to change that over time. Uh oh. Spaghetti yo. So, we're going to have ourselves a little problem here. So, we're going to cross here. Let's cross those tracks. And let's cross those tracks. And let's cross those tracks. And let's cross those tracks. So, there you go. Now that train is going in there, it's going to make us lots of monies. So if you go here, you can see the amount of money that you get for the different shipments that you get from moving people and moving mail and moving ore and moving oil and stuff like that. So now we have even more in. So ta-da, look at that. We're already at 10. And that's just general maintenance stuff. So there's no competition, though, in this part of the game. So you definitely learn a whole lot more about the game when you first play through it and then you just keep on getting more and more and more as you go along. So, now we can make upgrades, but I think you get the idea as far as that's concerned. So, okay, victory. Trains. This is the breakdown for trains. So, again, we were going through the F keys. I haven't forgotten. I just get off on tangents. Finances. Um, let's buy these. Competition. If you saw other... If you saw other AI here, you could buy their companies and buy them out. If you bought them out, you get control of them, or you can liquidate all of their assets. This also gives you a graph to let you know where you are compared to the others. As you can see, just by the activity and how much I've learned, so I slowly increased. I now know way more, so jumping into this game, I'm just like, let's just start re refining all of these, these goods here, and pew, my stock has just skyrocketed. So, oh, let's, let's buy another one. We're going to buy all of our company. So, okay, victory. These are the victory conditions. You want to make sure you have these done. I think these are just bonus points for the end of the game. You don't need to have it done, but it's a good idea, and you probably get a huge bonus for having that. So this will give you the breakdown for what your, what your trains are moving and how much they're getting. So this train here, that one's decent. This is the worst one, though. So if we're looking at how much money we're getting off of a train, let's see here. This is the train that's getting us the most. Second, third. This is the one that's getting us the least, but that's okay because we need the ore to supply for making the bars. So you know what? We're okay with this. We're not it's not a big deal. If we wanted to upgrade further, we would probably want to get rid of our passenger trains and start moving better commodities. Which is kind of a stink thing to do because then it's like how are they going to move from city to city walk drive there are no roads here you can switch to maintenance as well so you can see the maintenance the wait times so you can see how much time so this is a this is a terrible train all the way around we should we would we would want to get rid of this train and probably this train and you look at the wait times you're like how much time is being wasted between these so you'd want to try to reduce the wait time then this is the goods tracker. Again, this is more of like the economy side of it. So you can see how the prices on a various commodity does. It fluctuates, which again makes the game dynamic and interesting. It also gives you percentages on how much this NPC or that NPC has versus those. You want to try to get the top one, but if there's a lot of competition for the top one, you might want to go down a couple notches like for manufactured goods. That's second best. If somebody owns the top one, if you get manufactured goods and food and wine covered, you're probably going to beat out that person eventually because the price is going to drop on the top ones eventually. Like, it's supply and demand. Then you got industry. This is something that I'm not too familiar with yet. If you invest in industry, you get bonus, you get extra money for shipments that come in because you can have multiple people that have different, different stations in different cities. If you own like the refinery in here and some other NPC was using the refinery, you get paid whenever they use it. So refineries and refining goods, you want to own that business because then you get paid additionally whenever anyone else uses it, whether it's you or anybody else. If you use it, you get a bonus as well, so it's good all the way around. 
Patents are for a short time, you get a bonus in one area or another. If you buy a patent, you get it for a while, and then it becomes public domain after a while. Once it becomes public domain, you no longer get a bonus. So you don't get the bonus of, like, more effective train movement or stuff like that. And that pretty well goes through everything. Let's see here. Victory condition, as you can see, there's still a while until the victory condition is met. We now have all the stocks in our company. I don't know if anyone can buy us out, but if they did, they'd have to dump a huge chunk of money to be able to buy us out. So, that should be about it. This resets the camera position. This is the activity log. This is to go to cities. So you can quickly jump between cities. That'll make it easier for you. Let's jump to Las Vegas. No, Los Angeles. Chat, hello, world. And then that shows the chat at the top, so if you're against other people, you could chat, I guess. I wouldn't be paying attention to that. I got a game to, game to play. This gives you the time. This is time control. You can make time go slower. You can make time go normal. You can make time go faster. You can pause. You can unpause, of course, with the P key as well. And that's the escape menu. This drop-down lets you buy and sell within looking at the main menu so you can navigate faster. The amount of money you have, that pretty much sums it up. Let's jump into a game where there have been other, other NPCs, though. So I did really well in this game. This is another one. This was a random map, though. Everything was jumbled up, mixed up in random, so who knows what's going to happen here. And so we're against another person here so when another player or another an AI has been added to the game it adds a whole new dynamic because now you have competition you have to get around their rails and so it's a huge huge terrible mess as you can see I cannot connect my rail to theirs so I cannot use their rail but I can go over their rails so if I wanted to get Easton I'd have to go like this and then I'd have to build this and then if I wanted to move people from east into somewhere else, I'd need to move them that way. But there's no there's no supply of anything here, so I would only use east end if I was moving like lumber here to make that. But then if I did that, the other player could compete with me by taking the manufactured goods before I could take the manufactured goods. So there's there's a whole new level of play that you have going on here. Then as you see, now I have to compete with somebody when I'm buying industry actions or patents or stuff like that. And so he might try to bid me up and you might have even more aspects to it. So now I own that industry. So he still has to pay me, but he might bid me up and try to make me have less money. You look at the financial reports, as you can see I was with several other people. When it started out, it started out and we can't zoom in, that's a pity. Uh, Cornelius Vanderbilt was the main competition for me and the Jay Cook Cook Cookie Jay Cook Jay Cook almost went out of business right away cuz he was right next door to me he was he was already to lose he was losing bad and then the green guy was like what 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 and then he just pfft, he got bought out by he got bought out by uh by Jay Cook and so he bought out this business so I started to buy stocks in other companies and so as you can see I have more stocks in this in Jay Cook's company than he does so if I want to buy him out I need to have what is this six, seven million I've got eleven million so I can buy his company now I can choose to liquidate or I can choose to merge if I want to just take all of his assets as my own I can merge if I want to just get rid of them I'll liquidate and that's how much I'll get off of him instead so I'll liquidate now it's a whole lot more clean and there's less rails all over the place but it's still a huge mess and now I can refine do a better job and get more stuff if you want to at any point retire and see what your score is you can retire I still did really well in this game apparently prestige score objective score net worth and it gives you the different different ranks that you could have depending on your score that's the same as Sid Meier's Pirates then you can keep playing you can keep like quitting and resetting Let's go back to the main menu. Thankfully, we haven't seen any crashing, so that's pretty cool. That's nice of them. Normally, it crashes in, I don't know, several hours. Normally, my game will crash, but again, I've got a lot of saves. This is the, the, the quick saves, the save games, and so you can see for the last bit, it's been saving 
every few minutes. So even if it does crash, I still have access to the game, so I'm not losing out on too much. If you want to start a new game, there are some different ways that you can play. So here's the difficulty that you can go through. So let's just finance here would probably be what I would want to do. You can have the start year, end year. I used randomize for randomizing everything, but you've got several different maps that you can go through. Wait, Medusa? Oh, Mesa Madness. This looks interesting. This would be an interesting, interesting one. Route difficulty, number of players, three, random, random, ending year. Let's, this is probably a shorter game. Be the last railroad, railroad standing. Three. Uh-oh. Spaghettios. So there's the, there's the, we crashed notification there. So that, uh. That's a that's a good spot good spot to end this on I think. So hopefully you know I can't can't do anything else with that. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. As you can see, runtime error. This is the crash that you continually get, and it has been almost an hour of recording. So my estimation on how often and how regularly the game crashes is ringing true on my end. Thank you for watching. This is a fun game. Unfortunately, though, it has a crashing problem. Hopefully there are some operating systems like 7 and earlier that it probably is more optimized for 2006 and before. Those operating systems it probably runs on better. If you can get a hold of the game title that doesn't crash, it would be a really solid simulation game. I actually was not one of the people that loved trains as a kid, but I absolutely have loved playing this game. So, thank you for watching. My name is Atratsu, and stay tuned for more My Thoughts on Videos.